Okay, this is a, a malt extract. This is what you use to make beer. This is the main ingredient, and this is an unhopped version of it. It's unhopped the malt extract. What I did was uh, have to warm up the cans so as to soften up the syrup-like mixture because it's, it's really, really thick, as you can see. It's like a syrup. Anyway, once this is is softened up, I put it in a I put it in a pitcher. Okay, first thing uh, in order to make beer, you have to concentrate on cleanliness. Everything has to be cleaned and sanitized. Now, as you can see out here, I, right now I've got uh, water boiling. It's distilled water only. I've got the still water boiling and I've got my my true beer brew bucket. That's my fermenting bucket. Campton pill, that's a sanitizer. That's to make it everything, sanitize everything. You crush your pill into a powder, pour it into your container. One pill is, is good for one gallon of water. real good. This is an important tool you're going to use. This is your, your siphon. What I'm going to do to sanitize it, I put my holes into the water, the outside of it. Then I'll go ahead Clean the inside. Uh -oh. no. <laughs> Thoroughly clean. Uh -oh. okay. And I'll just set it on the side until I'm ready to use. Hey, can I ask you something, sure. Pops? Sure. Is that a sanitized area? Yes, it is. That's all sanitized. Okay. Everything here is has been cleaned and recleaned and cleaned again. So did Camera Girl clean it? She tried. I wouldn't let her. That, <laughs> this is my brewery. <laughs> she want to clean everything. Okay, what I'm doing right now, I've got a malt extract, and the reason I put the hot water in here is if I pour the malt extract into the hot pot while it's while it's hot in there, even though there's, there's boiling water, it's, it's real heavy and it's going to sink straight to the bottom, which will burn my pot. So I want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just mix everything right here into this food type bucket. And you can uh, you can see how thick that is. It's like a molasses. This extract is thick. So what I want to do, and it all and it all sunk to the bottom. Just like I said, it would, and it will burn your pot. TJ, you want to get me the other uh, container there? The other malt extract right there? I see a roll. There you go. So you see, I'm helping him, and in doing this, I'm making Urban Treasure Hunter beer. Yeah, we'll name it the Urban Treasure Hunter beer. And for a measly $24.95 <laughs> donation, you could pick one up. <laughs> and that's each, not a six pack. And you know what? He's joking because we don't have a liquor license and we don't want to go to prison. That's why I said donation. Get it? <laughs> we don't sell anything. But you have to have glass for this process because... That, that that extract just doesn't come off of plastic real good. All right, I'm gonna try to scoop out. See these big pictures? I don't know if you see this or not. You can really scoop, get everything out of it. Oh yeah. 
Now when you're making your beer, you're going to need five gallons of distilled water, two three point three pound cans of a good malt extract. I'm not going to tell you what kind I use. <laughs> then you'll know all my business. <laughs> And you need My partners clean. don't even know. Yeah, he even peels the labels off of it after he buys I it. I put the labels in <laughs> until it rolled in somebody else's garbage can, so the, I don't even want to put them in mine. <laughs> All right, now, my pipe's in. Well, I want to show this to you if I can, because I, you know, I, me, I have to learn everything the hard way. At the bottom of this pot, I don't know if you can see it, is burnt. And that's how I know about just putting it right in the pot over the fire and burn your pot. Now, now we got that out the way. <laughs> Cajun cooking at its finest. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to pour this back Cajun in there. It's Cajun been music. worked and worked and melted and melted. You want to come here and help me out there, TJ? Yes, yeah, sir. You're, okay. you're the man. Uh, why don't you pull this over a little bit? Let me get out of the camera. Here. Okay, that's it right there. Okay, I'll hold this down for you. Yeah, I got burned there. Yeah. No, I hope not. Like when I was a kid. <laughs> just move. <laughs> so don't laugh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Watch out. Just be careful. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Are you crazy? Why am I doing it? Am I not? I should have learned by now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Was it hot? It came oh, damn right. close to my fingers. That's not too bad. It's not like the washing machine that uh, you uh, had me get on the backside of and push down the stairs that I rode on when I was a kid. Yeah, well, that's why I'm the smart one, boy. <laughs> no, obviously, I'm still the dumb one if I'm holding a damn pot while he's pouring <laughs> boiling water into it. All right, now. All right, I'm going to let this boil. And when it comes to a boil, when it comes to a boil, I'm going to be adding some Cascade hops, Cascade hop pellets. Then I'm going to cook it down for 30 minutes with my Cascade pellets. It looks like rabbit food, but believe me, when you put it in, it's going to start bubbling. So you might see bubbles come over. I've done that before. So. <laughs> You just scream and pull it off the fire and <laughs> hope the beer is okay. So right now we're going to, I'm going to take a little break. If you ever happen to be around the Saxon Street Brewery, you might want to stop in and get a cold urban treasure hunter beer. This is it. You see no label, but it's good. It'd make a head on that. That's it. You know, my, my, uh, my great grandfather, he's the one, he used to live in the woods. He'd stay in the woods all the time making, making wine. And I think I inherited all this want to make stuff from him. That was old Placid. And uh, I understand he was a heck of a man, you know, back then. You know, he, he stayed in the woods. I don't know what kind of way he got his berries, but he made good wine of it. This was way back then. But somebody in my family is going to inherit this wine and beer process and uh, probably the urban uh, treasure hunter. And what I'm doing now, I'm still stirring because that stuff is thick. It's like molasses. So I'm stirring and stirring and stirring, trying to keep it off the bottom and keep, keep it to where it's going to break up in that hot water. And uh, like I said, you want to use distilled water. And the reason is distilled water is so much better for you when you're making beer. You know, you don't want all that extra little things they got in the city water. That's going to make you sometime, uh, never mind, you know. You know what I mean. Nothing yellow. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the 
the hops I'm talking about. They look like some little rabbit food. You know, the only thing is, if you got a rabbit, you feed it to them, they're going to kill them. It's because uh, the animals, you know, they just don't know when to stop. Okay, I'm going to add this in here to my extract. Like I said, I got two and a half gallons of hot water right here. And that's distilled water. And now, I'm going to as the pellets hit the water, they break up into a powder. So now I'm just going to keep stirring them up because it's going to have a tendency to overflow. It's going to start a, <coughs> a bubbling process. And it's going to want to overflow, so i got to keep an eye on it and give it 30 good minutes to work. And this is my pot. I raised my fire just a little bit. Whoa, boy! And it's still kind of thick on the bottom. But, that's the way it is. That's the process. Oh, Lord! Here comes my bubble! Oh, Lord, have mercy. Gotta cut that off for a while. There goes my bubbles. There used to be a song about bubbles. I sing it every time I make this beer. Ah, look at that. Going down. Going down. I might have to get me a crawfish paddle to start using to mix this. Now, I'm not done. I gotta light my fire again, but this time I'm gonna put it real low. Cause this process, this process is the best. Oh yeah, boy, I tell you, she just doing her thing. Get that spatula, try to take some of this off the sides. You don't want to lose all your hops to the side of your pot. Cause then you're going to just, you won't have any in the beer cause it's going to cake up. I like to keep my sides clean. And it's starting to smell, even right now, it's starting to smell like beer. You smell that? Okay, now, everything is boiling real good. I still got about 15 minutes. I'm going to hook up my chiller. This is my homemade chiller right here. Stainless steel. Excellent. This will take it 40 degrees. Take it down 40 degrees because you have you can't put your yeast in there unless it's below 90 degrees. This is my chiller. What I do, I don't believe you're gonna find this on the market anywhere. Grandson, come over here, boy. This is uh, my grandson, <laughs> Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Hold oh, this yeah. lid for me, would you? Sure. Now, what I do, I have, I have to get take my ice chest and put me a couple of holes in there so I can get my chiller working because my chiller works actually on ice. And it will knock, knock down the temperature by 40 degrees. I put this through there. Now, my ice, I have to fill my ice chest at this point with ice so I can get that chiller working. Do you want to hold the lid so I can do the muscle work or? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who are you again? You don't remember? I'm the star. No, I, I want to pack my chiller real good so I can get the proper effect because it doesn't do any good to have the equipment if you're not going to handle it correctly. And I don't believe you're going to find much of this stuff anywhere on the open market. Special made. I have to call special made and uh, 
I told the factory that if anybody's interested in it, I would let them know. You know, we'll see what kind of price we get on that thing. But stainless steel, that's to me, that's a much better. That's much better than copper, and I can keep it clean easy too. Okay, the chiller is getting ready. All right, now that we've got the uh, the brew brewed, I'm going to go ahead and cut the fire off. And your process is almost done, almost completed. Now, what I want to do is add two and a half gallons of distilled water. to cool this down and at the same time make up the volume for my beer. I tell you what, and this smelled really good when this beer was making. Oh, thank you. And there's one. And here's the second one right here. It makes a little mess sometimes. So right now I'm at four and a half gallons. But I'm the type of guy I want a five gallon five I got a five gallon pot, I want five gallons of beer. I'm stir it up a little bit. check my temperature. I've got to get below 90, 90 degrees before I can start using my yeast. I don't want my yeast to just cook and all that other stuff. Right now I'm at 100 and, uh, 135. I'm at 135 degrees. So, I'm going to go ahead and start pumping and siphoning. I'm going to start siphoning and I'm siphoning. As you can see, I'm going to start filling up the bucket. It's going through these coils that are, that are frozen going through the coil and as it comes out the coil it's way way cooler than when it's going in so my chiller saves me this chiller will save me about eight hours six to eight hours time just trying to let it do it on its own this is going to chill it down to where when i'm done i can go ahead Add my yeast, take a take a, a, a reading to see my alcohol level, what it's gonna be. Add my yeast and leave it alone. It's gonna do its thing. I don't have to touch it for 10 days. In 10 days, I'm gonna go ahead and bottle my beer. Ah yeah. Yeah, right now, I'm just about finished siphoning out all the, the beer mixture, which is called wort. And uh, as you can see, we're at the bottom of the pot and it's getting thicker. But it cooked for 30 minutes and right now it's making a nice head on that bucket. I'll be uh, checking the alcohol level pretty shortly. As soon as it's finished, I'll be checking the alcohol level in it. And uh, well, you have my beginning uh, SG, so I'll know what my what what, what alcohol percentage I'm gonna have. You know, once I once I'm finished with my brew and prior, you know, prior to putting my yeast in there. <clears throat> but I tell you what, it smells real good. It's got a good head on it. And uh, it 
going real slow, but I've got small piping because the smaller you pipe, the slow, the longer it takes for your, your beer, your wort to go through the cycle, that's the more it's going to chill. You don't want it to rush through there. Okay, now I'm going to check my alcohol level. And I've got my hydrometer. And I'm going to fill my little tube up. And I'm going to check my reading. And as you can see, right now, I'm at about a 1.45. So, can you say how it works and it just bounces? That's so cool. Oh, yeah, well, it and, 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 it, and it gives me a reading here. Okay, 1.45. That's going to give me about a 6.5%, 7% alcohol level once it's completely finished processing. So, that's what we're looking for. I don't like 3.2 beer. I like a beer where I can get a buzz. And this is the way to... Okay, so what we've done, we went ahead, we boiled the distilled water, we gathered our supplies, we sanitized it, we boiled the distilled water, we put in our extract, malt extract, we boiled it, and added our, our hops, boiled it for 30 minutes, shut it down, ran it, added water to it to get you up to five gallons, ran it through the chiller, got the temperature down to 90 degrees from where it was, now all the way down to 90 degrees. We're ready at this point to add our yeast. So what I'm gonna do, and I might add, this makes uh, 48 bottles or eight six packs and by the time I'm done with this I will uh, I will probably my six packs will run me about three fifty about three dollars and fifty cents but I know it's good beer and it's a high alcohol content beer so don't think you know don't think you're just gonna come in drink a six pack and go home you're gonna come in drink two or three and say geez what a anybody wanna drive me home because it's that good all right, I've got my yeast. I'm going to sprinkle it. Sprinkle my yeast on the top. And you can see all the little suds. Now, I'm going to give it a little stir. you notice that beer or the wart rather, is a little dark. As the sediment falls to the bottom and it starts its fermentation, which should be, it should be fermenting by tomorrow morning. It, the sediment's going to start falling down and as the sediment falls, the beer starts to clear. And once you, after 10 days of clearing the, and the bubbling quits, let me show you what happens. This true brew brewer fermentation bucket. It's got a sealed top. I'm going to put that on top. And it seals. Seals very good. <laughs> Then from there, got a firm in, uh, airlock. Put the airlock right in the top of your bucket lid. Pop the top. Add a little bit of water.
Now as it ferments, as it ferments, it's going to bubble. This is going to bubble and bubble for days. And when the fermenting has stopped, totally stopped, and you have no more bubbles, you're looking at maybe seven days, could be as much as ten days. Once it's all done and it's completed, you want to open it up. And, and by the way, once you set this up somewhere, don't touch it until the fermentation is finished because you don't want to disturb the sediment. Sediment goes to the bottom, take your siphon, you pump it into another bucket, add sugar, uh, I believe 0.5 of an ounce of priming sugar, I like to use 0.3 to it, and then I bottle at that point. Make sure you don't disturb the sediment. And that's all I've got. Now, you too can have a microbrewery and make your own beer. And, and the fun part of it is, the fun part of it is, is that while you're making your beer, you get to experiment. You've got bukus and bukus of different kinds of extracts to use. You can get light extracts for for, a pale, uh, for ale beer, or you can get darker extracts for ale beer, or you can make a lager beer if you got a refrigeration system, some way to keep it at a certain temperature. I've got that method to I can use, but I think with me, the regular ale beer is the simplest, and it would be the simplest for you. And as uh, long as you keep everything clean, I tell you what, you start today, and in 30 days you're drinking your beer. 30 days. And if you, but if you're in a rush, you know you can go 21 days, but the longer the better. And it, it, and it ferments while it's in the bottle. Remember that it'll ferment while it's in the bottle. Once you bottle it, it's still going to ferment, but you won't have pressure like you do with wine. But it'll be making. And as soon as you pop that, take it and, and open your bottle of beer, you're going to see the bubbles come bubbling out. Or you're going to have a head on that thing. And I tell you what, people's going to be amazed. All your friends are going to say, hey, Gala, look what, look what he did. I do thank the Urban Treasure, Hunt, Treasure Hunter for inviting me on his show. Uh, it just amazes me what he does with that metal detector. Goodbye and uh, I'll be cooking for you tomorrow. Oh well, it's been a day. <sighs> Good night y'all.